Hey guys, it's me, Johnny Crimson 2000 here, and welcome to my Let's Play of Dead or Alive 1 for the PlayStation. Now, some of you may be wondering, why am I doing a Let's Play of Dead or Alive 1 if I've already done one uh, a while back? And I'm going to get to the reason why in a little bit. But before I say that, I have to express my aggravation at how long it took this game to come out. And you'll notice the reason why I, I talk about it right now is because um, you may notice here that, uh, yes, I have done a Let's Play of Dead or Alive before, Dead or Alive 1. This is the PlayStation version. But in the previous video that I did, previous Let's Play, you may have noticed that the quality of the video it was a little bit better. The frame rate was a little bit better. The reason why is because I recorded that using my HD PVR. I had to record this using my uh, Dazzle. For some reason, when I was recording this game, it my HD PVR just stopped working. I don't know what was wrong with it. And I tried so many times, and finally I just gave up and I had to settle with recording it with my old setup using the Dazzle, which is nowhere near as high quality as the HD PVR. So if that's, I just had to put that out there right away. Um, so again, sorry for the sort of the decreased quality. Um, from going from the first Dead or Alive Let's Play that I did going to this one. So anyway, um, this game, as you guys can see, is Dead or Alive for the PlayStation. The previous one that I did was Dead or Alive 1, which was the Saturn version. I played the Dead or Alive 1 Ultimate version for the Xbox, but more or less it was Dead or Alive 1 for the Saturn. Really the only difference that Dead or Alive for Dead or Alive Ultimate, which is how it's called, or Dead or Alive 1 Ultimate, which is how it's called, the only differences really was that it had a revamped graphics and um, it had live support so you can play online and it went from being stereo sound to surround sound. Other than that, the version that I played for the Xbox um, Dead or Alive 1 Ultimate, really it was still the Sega Saturn version which was the original home release of Dead or Alive. This version um, came out in 1998. The original arcade version of De Dead or Alive came out in 96. The Saturn version, which was the first version that I played, came out in 97, and the PlayStation version came out in 98. This is the PlayStation version, and yes, there are enough differences for it to have warranted a separate playthrough, at least in my opinion. Um, so let's go ahead and sort of get what's really new here, and my god, <laughs> her boobies are bouncing. Yes, this is a Dead or Alive game, so you will see a lot of that, especially with Lei Fang here. She has a lot of uh, wind, wind taunts and things like that that just make for a lot of fan service. If I'm correct, I think they said that they actually made an entire graphics engine just so they could get the, uh, the, the breast to bounce like that, which is just, it makes me giggle. <laughs> um, so anyway, the Dead or Alive for the PlayStation is different enough from the Sega Saturn version. For all intents and purposes, this is the superior version. So if you do have a Sega Saturn and you don't mind importing games and so you can get the original Dead or Alive, which was only released in Japan for the Sega Saturn, and you have a PlayStation, I would I would suggest going with this one because it is the superior version. For starters, uh, one of the big differences, probably the main difference, is that you have two new characters and oh, look at that. <laughs> this is one of our new characters. His name is Bass. He is a big Hulk Hogan looking mofo. He is strong. He is slow, but he has a lot of slams and pro wrestling moves. And he can be rather annoying, as you guys saw there. And in uh, previous playthroughs of this game, this, can, this guy can be a pain in some of the later, like if he, if he, sh if he shows up in, in the later rounds. Because as you guys know, being a fighting game, uh, the the longer that you go, the, the harder the difficulty of the characters can get. And I will get to the difficulty uh, in a little bit. But if you manage to get base on the later levels, my god, you're going to have a hard time. Because he is definitely one of the hardest guys to, uh, to fight in this game. So, he was one of the new, new characters that was released for this version exclusively. Uh, this is the first game that he appeared in, the PlayStation version of Dead or Alive 1. It's based. The other one is Ayane, who is the purple-haired Kunoichi, female ninja, who is the, I think, the half-sister of Kasumi. 
Now, the different you you may have actually seen her in the opening intro at the start of this uh, at the start of this video. Now, at first, I was going to actually, you know what? Let me continue on. I'll I'll talk about a little bit about Ayane in a little bit, but. Those are the two main differences, why you may want to get this version first, um, the two new characters. Sometimes with some series, I'm looking at you, Virtual Fighter, getting new characters, especially two new characters, so oftentimes warrants an entirely new game, but Dead or Alive says, you know what, no, we're going we're gonna to put it in a remake or an updated version, you don't have to buy an entirely new game, or we don't have to make an entirely new game, so that's pretty cool. You also have a new graphics engine which this is a PlayStation game and it still looks pretty amazing in my opinion so a new graphics engine the, the graphics look a little bit more stable the Sega Saturn the the I think mainly just be, being a Sega Saturn game it's not that great of a 3D console it's more of a 2D powerhouse so some of the graphics looked a little wonky here and there this version definitely looks a lot better the graphics look a little bit smoother they're the smoother the characters look a little bit smoother more realistic uh, there are new backgrounds, as you guys can see in the back. There's new music, which I really like. I, I really like the, the music in this game. And there is a revamped fighting engine, which I will get to in a little bit as well. Um, the other thing is that this game has a crap ton of extras. A lot of unlockables, besides the two characters. Actually, um, there are two characters to unlock. It's Ayane, and it's Rideau, which is the final boss character. And I hate you, Zack. I spent so much time. If you guys want to know how long I spent on characters, just look at the timer on the top right there. It's at 2 minutes 15 right now. Just, just, just keep an eye on that. Just keep that in mind. So anyway, there are a bunch of unlockables in this in this game, which easily makes it the preferred uh, the preferred version. In fact, this this game actually has a lot more unlockables than Dead or Alive 2 did on the Sega Saturn or uh, Sega Dreamcast. Um, besides, you have some extra configurations here and there, like you can change the voices and things like that. You can unlock um, new new modes and things like that, backgrounds, wallpapers, uh, the voices that you hear in the menus, I believe. But uh, besides that, there are a crap ton of costumes to unlock in this game, just a massive amount. Just so you guys know, each character has well over... Mm, each character, each of the male characters has five costumes that you can unlock. Um, the female characters each have 14 different costumes that you can unlock. That's a lot. A lot of costumes, especially for a especially for a PlayStation game. And these costumes aren't just, you know, pallor, color palettes either. Some of these get really elaborate, as we'll see soon enough. We're, we're actually going to fight a mirror match against Lei Fang, and you're going to see how elaborate her costume can get. So, really, really, a lot of replay value in this game. Now, I'm going to talk about, having said that, I'm going to talk about Ayane a little bit. Ayane is a new character in this game, but you have to unlock her, which is kind of a bummer. I expect that when I first got this game, I expected her to be unlocked from the get-go, you know, like base. But no, you still have to unlock her, um, which is kind of a bummer. Now, the way to un originally for this Let's Play, for my playthrough here, I was gonna choose Ayane because hey, it, you know she's a new character. I'm gonna I'm gonna choose her. Unfortunately, in order to unlock Ayane, it takes a tremendous amount of time and effort. Just so you guys know, in order to unlock Ayane, you have to unlock Rideau first and beat the game with him. Now you may be wondering, oh, well that shouldn't be too hard, right? You just unlock Rideau, beat the game again, and, you know, you unlock Ayane. A lot of fighting games do that, you know. It's like an extra little treat for having unlocked the, the final boss character. However, in order to unlock Rideau, who is the final boss of this game, again, um, you have to unlock everyone's costumes. And I mean everyone's. As I mentioned before, every character has at least five different costumes. You start out with two, and you have to unlock the rest. So every character, when you first boot up this game, the first time you play this, every character has two costumes that you have at your disposal. And then after that, you have to unlock them. The male characters have five. So in order to unlock every... Uh, so if you're playing as, let's say, Hayabusa, and you want to unlock all his costumes, you have to unlock three, because each of the male characters have five in total. The female characters have 14. 
Now, and here's one of the, uh, here's Leifang's, out, one of her um, unlockable costumes. She's like a French maid, hubba hubba. Um, there's your fan service for this video. Now, you may be wondering, well, that shouldn't be too hard, right? Just unlock the costumes. That's the thing. In order to unlock the costumes, you have to play arcade mode, which is, this is arcade mode, and you have to beat arcade mode with with uh, the character that you want to unlock the costume for. Once you beat arcade mode with the character that you want, you unlock one, just one, extra costume. So, in order to get all of Lei Fang's costumes, you have to have played the game and beaten the game, arcade mode, uh, 12 times, because she starts out with two, and she has 14 in total. So you have to play this game 12 times to unlock all of Lei Fang's costumes. Mind you, She's a female, and there are three females in this game, initially, not counting Ayane. So, you can imagine, that's a lot of freaking costumes. Not to mention, you also have to unlock all the costumes for the males, even though they're not that bad, because they only have five costumes in total, but you still have to play through each one of their stories, or arcade modes, at least three times each. So, in total, the females, uh, in total, you have to play this game around 70 times to unlock Raidao. Once you unlock Raidao, you can play it again and unlock Ayane. So, initially I was going to play as Ayane, but after that, I saw that, I was just like, I am nowhere near unlocking Ayane. So, sorry guys, I'm just going to play as Lei Feng. And my god, Genfu took a long time to beat. You guys can, again, if you want to know how long it took me to beat a character, just look at the top right there. I did, had to do a lot of editing here, and you can probably tell because of the uh, the jump cuts in between the rounds there. Um, so as far as the gameplay is concerned, this game I do feel is a little bit more refined than the original one. I don't know why. I mean, the whole, the offensive hold, defensive hold is still kind of bothersome. It's still not where it needs to be. Not nowhere near where it's going to be in future installments. Uh, the problem here is that if you if you didn't watch my first let's play of the original Dead or Alive, first of all, shame on you. And second of all, the problem here is that you have your throw button and your counter button is mapped out to one button, to a single button. So sometimes when I want to grab, they end up doing a counter move and I end up getting, you know, hit in the face and it hurts and I end up losing. And so this game still has a little bit of that issue there, but because it's a revamped system, it's a little bit better. I find this one a little bit more accessible than the original Sega Saturn slash Xbox uh, Dead or Alive 1 Ultimate version. So, but it's still pretty, you know, it's still kind of archaic when compared to what the series will eventually become. And uh, yes, Baming did beat my ass. Just look up there on the top right. It's 10 minutes right now. It's 15 right now. <laughs> so it took me about 5 minutes. I think that's a 5. Can't even tell. I'm going blind. So yeah, the gameplay itself is a little bit more defined. It's a little bit better. Uh, but one of the things that I will talk about this, will mention about this, I don't know if it's just this version, but I don't remember having as much difficulty with the original one. The difficulty in this game is definitely high. As you guys see there, I, I constantly have to talk about me having to jump cut uh, during parts where I'm getting my, my butt behind. And look at that, he did one move and cut out almost two-thirds of my of my life bar there. And act He did a total of four moves and he beat me up. I had so much trouble recording this footage because, again, combined, you know, my HD PVR's inability to record this game for some reason, and I had to play this game about five or six times before I finally got to this one, which uh, finally worked. Um, and it was just a pain. This was like the most difficult game I've ever had to record because, again, I'm going through this thing the entire way through because when I was recording using my HD PVR, I just assumed that it was recording properly. I never had any reason to doubt that it was recording properly. It was only until after I finished recording and I looked back at the footage that I saw that it was corrupt and the audio and video was horribly out of sync. So it, it was just pretty bad. Um, so now here we are at Raidao. I'm actually going to leave the entirety of the fight there. I'm not going to jump cut anything just so you guys can see how a typical match especially at these later levels can get and just how cheap this game can get just to make my point across. I honestly think that the computer cheats in this game, going towards the later levels. You guys will see this. I'm hitting this guy with combos. He counters everything. You know, he's able to grab me from way farther away than I can to him. 
I mentioned this in my original Dead or Alive 1 Ultimate playthrough, but you have to be really close. Like, really close in order to grab. Like, right there. I did my little animation there, and I didn't grab him. But he was almost just as far away as I was. And he was able to get the grab, but not me. So, I don't know what's going on, but I, I seriously think that the, the computer cheats. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to leave it like that and say that the computer cheats. Um, it gets really, really frustrating. And you will be playing, you know, you're going to be facing these guys over and over and over again when you, when you play this game. It's a pain. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's a big pain. And again, if you want a challenge, especially since um, for a little while in the Dead or Alive series, starting with 2 and then going to 3, um, the, the series seemed to have gotten a little bit easier, especially since the counter, menu, counter system was uh, perfected. But if you want to, if you're a fan of Dead or Alive series and you want a challenge, just play this game, because my god, is this game difficult, especially towards the, the later levels. And again, in, 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 if you want to unlock everything there is with this game, you have to, um, you have to play it like this. In order to unlock the costumes, you have to play it under the default settings, which this is under. So you're going to be getting beat. You're looking at at least... I mean, it took me, what, like half an hour to beat this game? It, it's not... This video isn't half an hour because through the wonderful process of editing, I, w you know, I managed to delete or edit out a lot of the deaths that you don't see. Could look at that! That one move took off half of my life. How How is that not cheap? He's way overpowered. And this isn't just Rydow we're talking about. Some of the regular characters, especially the grapplers, have moves that you can just take out half your life bar in one move. But of course, you know, with you, performing an, a, an accurate throw takes a while because you have to be so damn close. But for them, nope. They can grab you from four or five feet away and... You know, some of the more intricate, some of the more difficult moves to do, like right there. And I tried to pause it because I was so mad. I was just like, oh, come on. <laughs> you can see some frustration there showing through the, through to the let, to the let's play. But yeah, I mean, this game, again, it, it, it has a lot of unlockables, but you really have to work towards them. And again, I, I really wanted to play as Ayane to show her off. But uh, it was just way too much work. Just imagine tr doing this, this, all this, and the music has to, has to loop because I've been, because I suck so much because I can't freaking beat right out. You know, just imagine having to do this, well, like 70 times, like half hour, 70 times. I'm actually gonna do the math right now. How long it could possibly take you? If it takes you as long as it took me to beat this game, which is about, we're gonna, we're gonna say 25 minutes given the difficulty and given how long this game takes to beat, we're going to say 25 times 70 is 1,750 minutes. Now let's divide that by 60. It's going to take you about 29 hours <laughs> of non-stop gameplay, just like going straight through. And that's assuming that you don't uh, actually over 29 hours because some, you know, with some characters, you're gonna take a long, longer time to beat this game. So you're looking at over 30 hours of gameplay in order to unlock absolutely everything. Like, absolutely everything. And it's amazing that you can do so. <laughs> but again, this is the preferred, uh, version. And like I said, this, the reason I didn't edit everything out from this battle is just because of that. I just wanted to see, let you guys see just how long it takes you know, finally I was able to beat him there, but my god, look just how long it took for me to beat right out. Now imagine that, but doing it with, uh, do it with, I think it was Genfu, Zack, Bayman. Those three guys gave me a lot of problems as well. So as long as it took me to beat right out, that's how long it took me to beat each one of those three guys. Because like I said, the difficulty really ramps up towards the end. Uh, so anyway guys that's that was Dead or Alive for the PlayStation I am planning to do the entirety of the Dead or Alive series I do have the majority of the games I have uh, the next one that's going to be coming up the next game that I'm going to be doing I already have the footage recorded 
is Dead or Alive 2 for the Sega Dreamcast. After that, I'm going to be covering uh, Dead or Alive 2 Hardcore for the PlayStation 2, which is kind of like this game. It has enough differences here and there to really warrant a, a playthrough. Um, but there's one one thing that I really want to show from that game, um, and one of the reasons why I include it, even though it's more or less the same game. Um, but I am going to be covering that. I'm going to be covering Dead or Alive 3. If I can get my footage to, to record properly for my 360, because my HD PVR has been not functioning right, I will do Dead or Alive 4, and I will do Dead or Alive 5, because um, I'm able to record footage from the PlayStation 3, thankfully. So, what are my thoughts on this game? Um, I, I like it. <laughs> Again, I think this is the preferred game to get. If you have Dead or Alive Ultimate, you may not you know, want to get this game, but if you're a fighting fan, I say go for it. There's enough things here to warrant a, uh, a purchase, and I say go for it. This is a good game. So anyway, guys, that's it for me. I will see you guys in my next video. All right, peace out. As always, if you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you want to get more stuff from me. In the meantime, if you like my videos, be sure to find me on Twitter, Tumblr, Raptor, and ScrewAttack.com to see the other gaming-related content that I upload. Info is in the description. Who knows? Maybe you'll like my stuff. Maybe? Maybe? <laughs>